Saturday morning, jump out of bed, put on my best shoe. Jump in my ride to ask you a question. Yeah, people, somebody call me a liquid life, liquid sound. Impressive. We need you for come on back, please do. May I beg you? I have to have this talk about this Afa Davis and Mr. Davis I read something on him people a lot of people in Jamaica heard about postal support and all of them support there and that's why I like to come on for life because sometimes when you touch on some topic you can get very um, some woody for information because a lot of people in Jamaica have somebody overseas whether it's a fiancé or a fiancé R B and C, but they don't know what's going on with the system. You understand? And there was a lot of changes. That is why I said what I said because I heard. Right? I heard. So let me go for Empress again. You don't know. We have to reason about them so people need to know this. Right? Are you back again? Yes. Yes, so, so continue, people, please. nothing to be scared of, right? So listen, why I, I hope nobody don't record this life. Why I ended up trying to work for immigration, right? I'm an Im immigrant myself. I figured right. let's go find the process because your family always asking you questions. People always fast asking you questions. Let me go on the inside and figure out how they do it so I could be better educated on the process. You understand? Right. Nothing crazy when the last administration was in office, they always felt that immigrants want their benefits. That's why right. people come to America because they want their benefits. So they took it to right. court. They took it to court and all kinds of stuff. I sat through the little stupid training and the train the way it is, it's not nothing that basically you have your discretion. So you do the affidavit of support, the person filed for you, they might not have a job or whatever, right? So whoever right. filed for you, what the what the thing was, the person that filed for you, they was proposing looking at the person credit, mm -hmm. looking at how much money they make to see if that person would really be able to support you, even if you had the affidavit of support. Right. So that was the new thing they wanted us to do. They was trying to force us into doing that, saying, look at it. And say that you know what this person might have potential that they might be on the government dime so they would be a public charge they was even going so far as when you apply to get your citizenship if at any point you was on government assistance for citizenship that could have been a grounds to use the public charge as well and i'm telling right. you sit and look through it to me I personally, I never agree with that whole public charge rule because I felt that's racist, right? Right. Because who is going to be affected by that most? Black people. Nobody really. Black people. Black people. Yeah. But when it comes to wealth and income in America, that mostly affect black people. When all these other people True. from all these other countries come to the U.S., they have money. Right. They have they have money and they have the and they have their you know their payment. So me personally. I ain't feel like that organization aligned with my values and how I think. When you realize, when you really understand immigration in America, sadly, immigration in America, no matter what administration, it's very, oh, for the person that said that it was implemented, but they didn't pass the law, it got passed. They had already fought it and everything. I'm telling y'all, we, we had to sit through a training, a two or three hour training on public on that whole public charge nonsense. They fought it. They tried to and nail to fight it. And we had to sit through for us to sit there to learn how to implement. But at the time, it was one of them things where I don't I didn't feel right in my heart that I could ever take right. that into consideration to sit as a person to say, I'm gonna look at another black person file and say, let me look at the credit. All of, all that don't matter. People come here all the time. 
people come here all the time and they have this misconception that everybody is coming to America for benefits. And that's why people that I encourage black people who are foreigners, who are, I know it's everybody want to come here for the American dream and stuff like that. Right. Right. The American dream. You want to be an entrepreneur and all that kind of stuff. We as black people need to get into these government jobs because what happened is a bunch of white folks sit down and make decisions that affect black people with not one black person being in the room. Sure that. They make decisions on, on, on black countries and black people and not one black person is in the room sitting there to speak up for black people. Like I used to work, when I started working at immigration, the, crazy, the craziest thing was, so this lady was like, oh, where you from? So I told her whatever. And she was like, oh, Ain't no real black Americans. They're only a bunch of foreign people. So imagine me being it, yeah, imagine me being at work, right? And having to hide the fact that I'm a foreigner because I have my own other people, own other people, black people saying, Oh, where the real, you know, ain't nothing but a whole bunch of foreigners down there. Foreigners. Where the whole where where all the real black Americans at? And I'm like, the way they was training people at that job, they train you to and it's sad, right? It's very sad. I hate to say this, but it was like if when we was working, if a white person from Eastern Europe was coming to get their papers and a black person was coming, you have black people that would look down on the black applicant and think that the white applicant was okay. Because of the skin, the color, yeah. skin color. Yeah. And I said, you know what? And I used to tell them, I said, ain't no way in the world that you're going to ever make me as a black person think that a black applicant is not equivalent to the white one. So it's a world, it's, a, it's always a worldwide thing. I always realize that yes. here. Because then you know, one time when I just was going to England, you know, in 2001, I was going to England for the first time. And you know, I went to England and I, I like the line, you know, the lines when you go into the immigration lines, you have the white man over there and you have the black man. So me, you know, say a Jamaica, I just come from and think of the first big country this me I go go in and now. I'm go and reached in the line and see the black man. You know, so the black man give me the hardest time. The black man give me the hardest time. The black man want to know why me I come to England. The black man want to know who me have in England. He want to know who me and the man a cousin. He want to know by which side I'm a cousin. And them ask me the same question them 40 times, 40 different way. And I the same way me answer the question. I may mean, I say, why me never go over the white line? Because me I look and I say I'm a black brother that. But not not necessarily all the time you see a black brother, you feel like your black brother is for you. Your black brother yeah. sometimes not like you. And him they even know you, but I just to you and him look the same, him just say, hey, God go with him and what am I doing here? Me done there, me and my family them there. I don't want them over here. You know? When so, I was when me, I was leaving the job, I was sad because I'm like, I feel bad for the other black immigrants that come through. Because who they gonna have on their side, you know, to look out for right. them and understand what is going, you know, what is going on and help them. When I my applicants used to come to my desk, if you come to me, and it's not nothing illegal I ever did for them, Richie. Nothing ever illegal. But a lot of people don't know the process because things are in words. And when you're working, you have your jobs, everything. Even attorneys didn't know the process. Anytime they come and sit in front of my desk, I'm going to sit there and help you and give you all the information you need. So that way, when you leave here, I can show you where to find it. Because the information is there. It's there. It's there out to the public. It's there, but you wouldn't know it. And what these other cultures do, right? Chinese, Polish, whatever. All of them have their little association, and they all sit together. They don't care what part, of the, what part you come from. If you're one of us, come let us help you they would go through and sit down with their people and teach them the whole immigration process from start to finish. When they used to come through, I already know. The Chinese, all, I used to just ask on purpose just to see how they work and how they sit together. I said, who helped you fill out your paperwork? Oh, I went to the association. Can't speak a lick of English, but they, 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 know, what, they know what to do. They know how to gain the system. They know how to get the people. They stick together. And they, they are unified. And they assist them, and they unify. And I hated to see that for black people. My black people come, and just from different cultures. Period. Right? Wherever you from, right. whatever. And I'm like, we don't have a black center to help black people with their little. You know, the Haitians might have one little thing. Most of my Jamaican clients will go to a lawyer. 
But all these other, the, the Asians, the Chinese, all of them have an organization and they know the game. Any way you want to whip the immigration system, they sit there and they coach their people and they all walk through it just the same way. And I hated to see that because it's like, y'all fronting up y'all nose on black people, but these right here, mind you, you can look at a file, right? The same charges for a Chinese or white person, whatever. The black person had the same charge, they would scrutinize the black person file way more than they would anybody else. And I'm like, no, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. Not, not when you come in front of me. If I'm not scrutinizing the Polish or whoever, wherever they come from, I'm not scrutinizing the black person the same way. The law say this, and that's what the law say. Because what they do is, on a black file, they're going to try to dig through and try to see if they can find fraud. Why the other person don't do fraud the same way too? Bad people are in all races, right? Definitely. So why you but, want me to you know, <laughs> you know what I always notice? Because, you know, we li I live in Jamaica, and we have a thing called classism or colorism, where we in Jamaica, when you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're too black and the judge by your address. So that's why most of the time people in Jamaica really take up all bleaching because they are, try, they are trying to belong. Because, you know, they say that one time the man will say, cool it up, his shit, pan, kalalu, and turn around and get near, near gaffi, near me. <laughs> So them time they never really understand what they mean. But me realize that when you when you when you have a, when your skin tone kinda of too dark, them always treat you different. But when you have especially your eye kinda of pretty, and I don't mean like your eye lock down one way, I mean like you know your eye have a little glisten in it. Them always say, Yeah man, you can come around. So in Jamaica they say if you're black, don't come back. If you're white, that's all right. And if you're brown, you can stick around. But we change up that. You know what we say? We say if you're white, don't get bright. And if you're brown, you can come around. And if you're black, you make sure you come back. And so we do our thing. We have to change the thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Definitely. Yep, 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 definitely. So that's why people, I'm not a, if y'all ever have any questions, y'all can inbox me a question. I'm a citizenship specialist because that was my specialty. I know people that work in adjustments. But if you ever have a citizenship question, that's what naturalization, I mean, that's what I specialize in. Adjustments, I know I've always asked somebody for you, like if you had a question and you're not sure. And to me personally, I'm going to tell y'all, the only time you really need an immigration lawyer is if you face, if you have something where you're facing deportation. If you're not facing deportation, yeah. a simple adjustment where you just have to fill out the paperwork. Everything you need is on USCIS website. USCIS doc is all there. Trust me. Any form you want. And you know to what I think is a problem, Empress. You know what I think is a problem. We don't read, and I tell people this no, all the way. Black people do not read. We are ignorant to reading. But it's not. I don't because, think. You know, I think it go generational, right? We wasn't a generation where we were taught for us to read and look at stuff. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't that because type of generation, and they yeah. and they know that too. Yeah. So it's like, and then sometimes people you held if you work in two and three jobs, right? You think you really have time for you to stop and sit there and read a lot of stuff. So for me, how I end up having all the time for me to read and all that kind of stuff because I work in that type of field, right? And then when I find out where the information is, it's like okay, now I tell other people if you need to know something. Now that we have we in a blessed generation, now we have the internet, right? Right. The internet is your friend now. Back in the days, I could understand, right? But these days, right. the internet is your friend. Look around, ask information first. If you ever feel that you need an attorney, right? I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving you legal, legal advice. Call them first to see how much they know about whatever topic you have to ask them. Right. Don't just go and give people your money. I have seen people where I used to have applicants, an attorney charged them $2,000 to fill out a naturalization paper. $2,000 just read. to fill out the paper. And when they come and sit in front of me, I still have to fix the paperwork for them. Find your cousin, your auntie, whoever that can read. All you need is they have every form that immigration have out. They also have an instruction form for that form. So if you need to fill out 485 for adjustment, there is an instruction form. If you use the instruction form and the form together, the two go hand in hand. Even when we work, as officers we were working, if we wasn't too sure about something, we pull out the instructions sometimes. Sometimes.
because the instruction would tell you what you need to put where. And then sometimes when Definitely. you go, they might just have to fix something for you. Yeah. But to me, if you're not a, when I say, if you're not in deportation proceedings, you probably don't need a lawyer. Because when the lawyer go to your appointment with you, with exception of, so in adjustment of status, right? The lawyer might be able to speak a little bit more and not even not so much. Because sometimes those lawyers just go there and make noise just to say they make noise for you. And it's really not a lot of noise that make no sense. Like they used to come in my office and sit down and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I just keep my same demeanor, right? Same cool, calm demeanor. They come in my office and they sit down. And I say, okay, thank you. That's it. Because what you just told me, right? I have laws right. and rules I have to go by. So even you can come there and make noise for your client and sit there. Because what they do is, too, they coach the clients that the process is scary. That it's going to be a scary process. And you Somebody's me. asking what's the website. What's the name of the website again? USCIS.gov. USCIS.gov. Yes. It's so, the USCIS.gov. Let me make sure it's .gov and, for sure. Let me US. Hold on. Let me just make sure, right? That's immigration website where, yes, USCIS.gov. USCIS.gov. That's where you can find all the information. You just go click on it. Click on forms, news. News is where you're going to find all the updated information. Any updates or anything that's going on, that's where you'll find it in news. Come on, people. This is very helpful. And I'm, I must say that I, I'm very thankful that I yes. and you mentioned can what I'm laws as, laws as well. Laws is good to know. Because it's good to know immigration laws. Another thing is, a lot of these people that you hear talking, that's, they think and they Jay Kula say you can say, 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 um, Jay Kula say you can call them also. They are very helpful too. Yes. And of course, they're not attorneys, right? But that website is very, very helpful. A lot of people will think they know about immigration law. They will talk to you about it. And they don't really know. For people, that is, there is a catch-all that they don't put out a lot for people. It's called a 360. A 360 is right. a catch-all form for people that's in certain situations. So let's say you came here, right? You met somebody, y'all together, y'all in a relationship. So y'all get married. They have intentions of filing for you. They haven't done it yet, right? That they are right. supposed to. But the person being abusive, holding over your head all the time. Oh, I'm not giving you a green card. I'm not giving you no green card. I'm not giving you no green card. You can still divorce them and use that 360 as something called a vow. Right. And you can petition for yourself. It don't have to be well, physical, that. it don't have to be physical abuse. So it can be just verbal abuse. Don't let nobody So you can be go. going through something. Them have you up and I say, well, you're not getting no papers and you go back yeah. and you punch up and boot and you go back don't and Don't let everything. nobody hold no people. green card over yourself, over your head. Don't let nobody hold no green card over your head. You can petition for yourself on that form 360 and file a VAWA. Now, I will say for the VAWA, if you want, you probably, the lawyers might be able to write up a nice, a nice, you know, story for you a little bit better, but you can absolutely use that for cert for special circumstances. Let's say it's other circumstances you can use it for too, but that's the catch-all form. If something happened and VAWA is one center that deal into it, right? But let me tell you what I have seen in my work, right? So I had, yeah. I ain't giving you no name, an applicant. Every time the husband called the police on her, she the one that always pled guilty to the charges, right? To the domestic mm -hmm. violence charge. She was still able to divorce that man, remarried, and use that vow of petition and petition and get the green card for herself. Somebody asking if a person with a felon can get a green card. So what kind of felon? If it's an aggravated felony, if you have if you have been convicted, so the law is convicted. Okay, so you can be charged. If you're not convicted, that's what you have to look for. If you was convicted of an aggravated felony, technically you so you have to get deported, right? It's no exception under the law. It's right. no except if it's an aggravated felony and you was convicted, that's the key word. They could charge you with a lot of stuff, right? I can follow police. Suppose you're you food out of store. Hmm? Suppose you're going to Walmart and people do that all the time. People do that all the time and they get a green card. <laughs> people do that all the time. People still okay. and 
you know who feel the most what I always saw? <laughs> and I hate to say it. <laughs> you know who steal the most? Who steal the most? In Jamaicans? Indians and Arabs. <laughs> me know that. Because I got England to see one Arab woman thief one bag of onion and run with it. I see that with my two eyes. Grab the people and onion from the corner store and run with it. I say a joke this. Them people thief onion. <laughs> onion, no. <laughs> so somebody say, this. can a deported person over 20 years come back deported for marijuana? Marijuana is still uh, federally federally illegal. So right now, they ain't doing no way. But I even asked them, right? So I try to plead. You know, I always plead on my people. I said, what about if you're a Rasta <laughs> and you need it for your religious purposes? They said, nope. Nope, 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 not happening. No exception right now for marijuana. So we just have to push and wait and hope that, you know, once they make it legal. But you see, all these type of reasons is why it's even so hard to even work through certain things, right? Because because marijuana is on that list, they have of illegal substances. And it's in a, you can find that law. of if you, if you ever want to find out what all the illegal substances is in the United States, it's written in law, I want to say it's in 18 USC or something like that. So because it's still on that list and it's tied into so many things, right now, you know, it's a little hard right now. But as far as when people, just because you got charged with something, don't mean it's a conviction. And I'm not sure if this one is available on Google. If you can Google this one right here, it was something internal. But maybe attorneys might have that list, but you can look up and see in each state what is considered a deportable charge. Because another thing, too, uh, so immigration system is broken up like this. You have the embassy side, which is run by Department of State, that's consular affairs. In right. the U.S., it is run by United States Citizenship and Immigration Service, which is USCIS. Anything for deportation that is handled by Department of Justice under EOIR, which is Immigration Court. ICE is a separate arm run by GHS. Customs is another arm run by GHS as well. Okay. So <laughs> somebody asked if, if you're overstayed on your visa, or that work? Well, technically, if you overstayed your visa, you're breaking the law, so it's up to you. The only way to waive that is by marriage. But if you leave and come back, then you have to deal with all of that. So, yeah, the only way to waive overstaying the visa is getting married to somebody. That's the only way. And that's why and that's why people get married all the time. But let me tell you. So what about? Yes. One well, thing I'm, about marriage, sorry. right? So the way the law is, you don't have to enter in marriage for love. It's good faith. You entered with good faith and with good intention. But people mess themselves up all the time. Because remember, now is the age of technology, right? Yeah. And I'm not giving legal advice. I'm not giving illegal advice. <laughs> if you got to get married to somebody for the paper trail, make it look real. <laughs> yeah, you people, have to make people, it double. People, people mess themselves up. And I'm, not, I'm not talking about having no big wedding, no this and that, all of that, right? They don't try to know the person where they might talk No, to. not even basic not even information. That's, they that's don't one know. little part of it, right? On paper, don't marry somebody in New York and you live in Florida. Which you can do that, right? You can you can do yeah. that. It's it's legal for you to do that. But the reason you can do that, let's say your husband is a doctor and the only place he can work is in New York. Okay? He can't get a transfer yet and you live in Florida. You can do little stuff like that. Example, we had one time a husband and a wife. Both of them married two crackheads. <laughs> Both of them married two crackheads. They living in the same house with each other, but both of them married two crackheads and trying to say that they, they live with the crackhead and all this kind of stuff. When you're looking on paper, I see the two of y'all at the same house. The address you put on your application where you say your spouse lived, you don't have nothing showing you ever lived there. And on top of that, all the documentation is showing that the crackhead and her boyfriend live in the same address. Right. All of a sudden, that's to dig. And then, if you are another big red flag, right? Be careful what y'all doing out here. You working, you've never been convicted of nothing. You go and marry somebody in the hood 
three or four felonies. They look at stuff like that. Because how are you with your good, good self going to marry such a thugged out person? So that's a, that's an immediate red flag. Yeah, those straps are, <laughs> straps are definitely red. That's, that's immediate red flags. So do stuff and do it, you know, use your head, do it with sense, with sense because again, as black people, the automatic notion is we we doing it for fraud because we want benefits. And someone with a permit get unemployment and still get their green card with marriage. Somebody have seen that. Unemployment, that's unemployment because you don't have unemployed, you don't have a job, right? The one I right. would say it get it get testy is when you join benefits. And the benefits I'm talking about, food stamps. That's where it get crazy. Yeah. That's where it get a little testy. Because me personally, right, if I was working and I saw you have a green card and you was getting food stamps when it's time to naturalize, me personally, it wasn't a big deal for me because I can legally, it's legally and not illegally type of thing, overlook it. I used to have some people I worked with where because it say that you can, if you had a suspicion, they would dig into it on purpose. Yes, that's me, Jamaican beauty. So, you know, dot your T's and cross your I's because you never know who you're going to have as your officer. That's all I would say. But unemployment... So I've been asking, I asked my friends, right, are they making any exceptions now because of the pandemic? And for right now, they haven't put nothing in place, but I can foresee something like that happening where they will make exceptions in place because of the pandemic is going on. Because the pandemic was something people couldn't control, right? If I don't have no right. job, if I don't have a job, what you expect? I had to do what I had to do for me to eat. So if that means getting on benefits, what, what do you want me to do? If you've been a convict, if you've oh, been yeah. convicted of misdemeanor. Misdemeanor is, yeah, misdemeanor, trust me. Just make sure. Right. It depends on them. So people get convicted. They even get convicted of domestic violence and stuff like that. Misdemeanor is not an aggravated felony. Misdemeanor is fine. If y'all are the people that owe child support, make sure you're paying your child support, taking care of your kids. Even if you're not on child support, send money back home because some people dig into that. So let's say you say you had two children back home. They will ask yeah. you, well, where's proof that you send money to the children? Because the way the law is written is called good moral character, where they want to make sure that you're not just abandon your children. So, and another way people get caught up, right? Today, they came in, they had a, a visa. So when they got the visa, I don't have no children, no nothing. When they got the green card, I don't have no children, no nothing. When it's time to get naturalized, all of a sudden, these children pop up. The kids are old children. How come you never put those children on nothing you had before? Right. So that's the next red flag again. Yes. And they could use that against you. I understand how the game go. I know what it is. Me, I just used to be like, okay, they wasn't, you know, they wasn't there what before. What if you had an annulment? What if you get an annulment but remarry the same person? Ain't nothing wrong with that. You still married to the same person. <laughs> you still you still got married to the same person. <laughs> and another thing they dig into that people do, if you know that you want to claim citizenship for being married to a US citizen, don't divorce the person immediately after you get your ten year green card. Don't do it when you hear wicked people. Don't do it. And I'm grateful. At least wait the three years, apply for your citizenship, get it, and then go ahead. With a few minor, can you be denied citizenship? No. If you've been in the country legally for over with a few, look at, pull up your, one thing I tell people, pull up your records and see what's on there and look at what the conviction, like if you pled guilty, pled not guilty, as long as you have never been convicted. Usually misdemeanor is not nothing that can get you. People stay in the U.S. Child abuse, domestic violence, all that kind of stuff. Can you file for your parents before? Yes, you can file for your parents before you get your citizenship. Once you get your citizenship, go ahead and call them and let them know your category moved so your parents can be bumped up. Because when you file as a green card, the waiting time is different. Once you're a citizen, that waiting time get eliminated. But you can always, just to me, just to put them in line, 
I would say go ahead and file. And then once you get your citizenship, just call and let them know that, hey, I got naturalized. So that way your pri their priority dates, that's the word. I couldn't think of it. The priority date would get bumped up.